So having captured all of this metadata into the system, we now move on to look at the iFind web client. This is the way that the uh, users across the organization can actually access that metadata to help them find clips and then use it for whatever purpose uh, they have in mind. So I'm going to close down iLogger but use the same screen here to show you the iFind web client. This is the main way that uh, users can search for media, find it, see the browse copy of that media and start to do one or two other things with the media as well. So everything that I do uh, now in this little section will be within a web browser. It's not an application, it is just a web browser that anyone can use from their desktop and they can access it using any of the main web browsers. I happen to be using uh, Internet Explorer for this particular part of the demo. So the user comes along to this, they can access this from their main desktop PC and then they can do a search. So I know what my clip is called and I'm just going to run a quick search here to find the clip. And here it is, the uh, ingest clip that we're still working on. It's still being ingested, but it's there and it's available for me to see that it exists on the system. I can see where it currently exists. So I can see the copy is on the Spectrum ingest server. The browse transcode, which we uh, also have seen, has been made. And also the IBIS system is transferring that clip as it grows onto the Omnion media grid to make it available for edit. So I can see all of those instances of this particular clip and I can use this button here to load up the uh, browse player and play the browse version here in my web browser in a very similar way uh, that we were able to do that in iLogger. So I can use this now, move through the clip, uh, have a look at it uh, there. I'm just going to move this uh, over here to give me a bit more space. And I can also move on to this POI screen to see the points of interest which have already been logged. And there are the two points of interest which I logged using uh, iLogger a little bit earlier on. So anything that's logged is immediately accessible to all of the users of the system and they can log their own uh, points of interest as well. So here there's the substitution. I can mark in, mark out and then choose from the same list that I found in iLogger here within the iFind web client. Uh, so substitute will be there. I can capture that in there as well. And now we get this substitution and the time codes marked in there as well. So I can augment the metadata that's already been captured about this clip from my web browser using the browse player to choose sections of the clip and build up even more of a picture of the various things that happened during the game. Now in terms of using those to start a, a, an edit of the high res clip, there's a couple of things I can do. I can use this button here to export the whole clip and uh, use just and just capture all of the uh, points of interest data there in the EDL so that when I open the clip up on the timeline in my final cut uh, edit session I'll see all of these various things that happened as markers on the timeline. Second thing that I can do is uh, if I've carefully marked all of these points where something happened during the game that really is the basic the basis of my highlights package for half time already done for me. So I can select either all or some of those from here and then use this EDL button and this is what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to click there and save this out as my highlight EDL and click save. And that now exports an XML based um, EDL which Final Cut can use with all of the media pointing to the high res copies which are stored on the Omnion media grid. Finally here in iFind, if I wanted to do something a little bit more uh, complex, I can drag these clips down onto my timeline at the bottom of the window here and then edit these. So I can uh, change the order of these clips in my uh, timeline. Once I'm happy with, the, uh, with where they, these clips are, I can preview what that edit will look like in browse quality by clicking on here. And I'd see that in the browse player there. And when I'm happy with that, I can export that EDL over to Final Cut.